Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines live at SanduskyRegister.com. My name is Matt Westerhold. I'm the executive editor at the Register. And my guest today is Todd Stevens, filmmaker, writer, director, Todd Stevens, whose new uh, uh, feature film debuts on Friday here in Sandusky and all across the country in 50 states and 50 locations. And uh, it's called Swan Song and it's set in Sandusky. We're gonna meet Todd in just a moment, but before we do, I need to mention Between the Lines is brought to you by serving our seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. If you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. Sometimes I forget that number. And we want to thank uh, Serving Our Seniors for continuing to sponsor Between the Lines. And with that, we'll go right to our guest, Todd Stevens. Welcome to Between the Lines. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me back. It's great and to be we're here. So, we're so, uh, you know, we're Sandusky proud uh, of, of your yeah. accomplishments and your movie, uh, Swan Song, which we want to encourage everybody to go watch this weekend at Cinemark. I think it plays four times a day at Cinemark, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I think, and I think all week as well, and it'll play, it'll keep playing as long as people see it, you know? So, so we need to line up for this movie. It is set in Sandusky, it's Swan Song. And you you gave us, uh, you honored us by, by letting us build you a, a newspaper that you incorporated into the movie. And this is that uh, fake news, as it were, which we <laughs> wow. never write except in this instance. But today you're on the front page of our newspaper, so we wow. encourage everybody to go out wow. and buy it. Wow, that's really cool. The, the still that's shots. Amazing, beautiful. I, lo I love the popcorn wagon. Yes. I really love that, that photo. It's so I know. Cool. All of these photos to me look like they were always meant to be in a movie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's such an ideal location to shoot. I mean, and, you know, coming home to shoot, you know, in my hometown, we shot like pretty much the whole movie downtown. Like mm -hmm. uh, most of it was in the space of like five blocks or whatever. Um, and we were all living uh, downtown. And I just have to start out by saying, you know, I could not have made this film without Sandusky. Um, you know, people, we, it was a low budget film. We didn't have a lot of money. So, mm -hmm. and it was summertime. So, you know, hotels and stuff are not cheap. And um, mm -hmm. so we literally had people donate spare bedrooms uh, that all the cast and crew were staying in. So mm -hmm. we were all, you know, dotted around all downtown. And um, Udo and I were staying at my brother's uh, house and um, sister-in-law's house that used to be the T Rose tea room. Oh, and that's where we did a bunch of shooting and um, you know, the Murray's helped out. I mean, it's just like, everybody was like staying in spare rooms and stuff. And so it was like a, it was a real labor of love. And so many people served as extras and donated locations and, you know, um, coffins for Linda Evans and you guys printed that newspaper, which was like such a huge honor for me. So I, I just, I felt like my hometown like wrapped their arms around, you guys wrapped your around, arms around all of us. And I'm just so thankful for that. So thank you. Well, and we're so excited uh, to be part of your work again. I mean, you've used Sandusky as a backdrop in Edge of 17, which was yep. a, a successful uh, feature film and Gypsy 83, I think. Yep, yep. So this is a trilogy. Kind of like the third part of, of my Ohio Sandusky trilogy, yeah. But that doesn't mean that I won't be back to shoot more. I think I have to start a new trilogy, you know? Uh, that would be great. We would like that very much. But one yeah. of the things you told our reporter, Andy Oriel, for his news article today was that this film is about, this is what you said, life is short live while you can enjoy life while we are here it goes by pretty fast yeah exactly so this is your your main character just reviews his life as he he comes back to sandusky he's he starts off in the beginning of the film in a nursing home and he 
you know, he, he's based on a real person in town, uh, Pat Pitsenbarger, mm-hmm. who I vaguely knew, you know, um, but he w- who was a really successful hairdresser and had a, the designer's hair salon, which is um, where Eric's men's store is now in the Rieger Hotel corner. I, I mean, can, he was there I can for, see the sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was there forever. And um, so, but, it, you know, he, he was like a big influence on me growing up because he was very flamboyant and very different. Um, you know, in the seventies, I remember, you know, riding my bike downtown and seeing like this almost like space alien, you know, rock star kind of like walking around and he, cause he wore very flamboyant suits and had like a velvet fedora and smoked these long Brown more cigarettes. And he, he was a real character, you know? So, um, I always looked up to him, uh, you know, as ba- I didn't know I was a gay kid at the time, but basically like my first exposure to like a fabulous gay man, you know? And um, so he's always kind of a role model to me, but we start the film um, in this sort of imagined version of his life. He's sort of at the end of his life in a nursing home somewhere out in the country. And he's just lost his will to live really. I mean, he's just kind of like counting, counting the, passing the time to die. And um, one day um, a lawyer comes and uh, with the register, you know, obituary in hand saying uh, your most famous, your most, um, your biggest client, Rita Parker Sloan, who's, you know, named it uh, an homage to someone that some people may remember, um, (laughs) has just passed away. And, um, and she's requested that you do her hair and makeup for her funeral. So, um, In my fictionalized story, the real Mr. Pat and Rita, who's played by Linda Evans from Dynasty, by the way, Mm -hmm. um, had had a falling out back in the day. So he's a little conflicted about does he want to honor this request or not? But ultimately, he decides to break out of the nursing home and sort of, you know, takes a walk uh, into town. So it's like it's almost like a road movie that never leaves town. He's essentially just like walking from one side of town to the other. And along the way, he kind of goes looking for his past, you know, uh, of people he remembers, places he remembers, and things have changed, you know? And um, so in many ways for the better, I, I, it was a film about, you know, someone kind of being dead in a way and, 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 and coming back to life. And, the, the city's rebirth and renaissance really helped inspire the storyline, um, you know, because I, I wanted um, I wanted as Pat comes back to life, so does Sandusky, you know, even the way we did the colors and stuff and the production design, it's like it starts off really drab and kind of gray. And, you know, once he starts like um, reconnecting and rediscovering himself, like the city gets more colorful and and all that. So um, I, I tried to make Sandusky like a real character in the film. And, you know, you, every single place we shot, you'll, you'll recognize. So, um, so that was, that was really awesome. But yeah, it's, it's really about, it's about this gay man in particular, but it's not a gay story. It's about, it's a story that so many people can relate to, which is that, you know, we all get a little derailed from our dreams sometimes. And, um, and, and a little lost and, some, and, and without purpose sometimes. And, you know, Pat was like an artist with his hair. He, he created, the, you know, he worked with Jackie Mayer and he, he created so many amazing hairstyles. I actually found in the register when I was doing research from the 1960s, there's like a portrait of a woman at Christmas that had this giant bouffant hairdo that she had Christmas bulbs like hanging from her hair. Um, on the cover of the Sandusky Register that Pat had done, did, you know, I mean, so he was really like a genius. Um, but, um, you know, in, in this film, he's lost, he's retired and, and he doesn't really know what to do with himself. So it's all about him kind of getting his groove back, you know. And um, so I had an amazing actor named Udo Kier, who um, <clears throat> plays Mr. Pat and um He's a face that you'll recognize, but maybe you don't know his name, but he's, you know, been in so many movies over the years. And we finally gave him a chance to really have like a, a feature, um, a starring role, like a leading part, because usually he plays like smaller parts. And um, he's getting the best reviews of his career. I mean, people are just loving him. And um, Jennifer Coolidge is in it, who has been one of my 
um, idols forever and ever. And uh, it's just, I don't know. And coming back home and, and making a film that was so close to my heart with these amazing people, it just, I felt like I was in a dream. So it was just amazing. So when did you, when did you first start writing this uh, swan song? Probably about five or six years ago, you know? So it's, you make these movies and it's a long, it's a process. It's just, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to be patient. Sometimes you're about to give up. But um, another thing that I would say is we did a, what's called a Kickstarter campaign, crowdfunding campaign, mm -hmm. and um, which the register uh, helped put the word out, which was incredibly helpful. And, you know, that, that's really what financed a big part of the film and, and, and got us literally kickstarted. And so many people in Sandusky um, donated to that. And so it just, in so many ways, the film would not exist without Sandusky. There's no way. Well, I certainly appreciate that. And I think you and I share a, a, an allegiance to our hometown. Yeah. For, for some reason that sometimes eludes me, but... <laughs> Right. It's, just, uh, it's like part of my constitution, perhaps. Um, it's Your movie is opening in 50 cities. Uh, yeah. And I think yeah. you mentioned Magnolia is distributing it. Tell us a little bit about your distributor. They really are one of the best, like, independent film distributors. Um, they're a New York-based company. They're actually owned by Mark Cuban from Shark Tank. Oh, okay. But... Um, but they they really love film. They're like a, a distributor that, of course they wanna make money, but so many of the people that work there love film. So mm -hmm. they're really known for treating their filmmakers incredibly well, which means things like, you know, you do the trailer and they let me be involved or the poster, like, you know, they, they, they welcome input from, from the, the film team. Whereas a lot of distributors, you sell it to them and they just do whatever they want. You have no control over it. So Magnolia has like involved me in every step of the way, you know, and they have even been so amazing to open it in Sandusky. And I mean, it's opening it in um, uh, Cedar Lee in Cleveland and, you know, New York and LA and just all over the place. But I really, <laughs> the funny thing is like, um, I care about how it does in New York and LA and stuff like that. But what I really care about is how it does hit the Cinemark. You know what I mean? That's why all... we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we're exactly. here. Yeah, we yeah. want, we yeah. want everybody to show up. Yeah, yeah. This is a reason to come out uh, for Sandusky to support you, uh, to convince you to come back and do this again. Yes. Um, for your next trilogy. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to see you again. I hope the next time you're in town, you'll stop by the register if, if, when that happens and we can talk again. We can talk about your next project. Have you figured out what your next project is? Are yeah, I've got a couple of things kicking around. I've always been obsessed with Mae West, the actor, actress Mae West. And um, she was also another big influence on me. So She also was a bit flamboyant. I oh, yeah, exactly. Some people actually said, thought she was a man there was a rumor a while that for a while that she was actually a man but it wasn't come up better. and see me sometime yeah yeah exactly exactly so um i want to do a biopic about her um picking up on the flamingos or i'm sorry on the um swan song kind of vibe i've always wanted to make a project called flamingos which is based in a gay retirement home in florida um so kind of like a gay golden girls as a tv show so that's what I'm developing right now, you know, and um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. See if we well, can. we hope you keep us posted uh, as your career progresses. We love watching it. We, we love that you came to Sandusky and you helped us be part of your movie. We hope you'll do that again. Uh, we wish you the best of luck on your uh, premiere. And I want to thank you so much uh, for being a guest on Between the Lines. Thank you, Matt. Oh, as You're always, welcome. thank you so much. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> okay. you. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya.